All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna walk you through how you can actually start to assess and learn about your own hip and uncover, is my mobility restricted? Is my flexibility restricted? Do I have the range of motion that I need or should have in my hip? And if not, what you can then start to do about it. First, we have to know, do we actually have that mobility present? Do we have the range of motion that we need? So what we're gonna be looking at today specifically is internal and external rotation. If you are in Operation Human First, you are gonna have the full class here accessible to you where I will walk you through how to assess both internal and external rotation and what you can do to start working on both internal and external rotation. Just bear in mind that the setups that I use in this video is just one setup for each. And so you guys have access to in the joint specific classes section in OHF all of the other classes for hip internal and external rotation, as well as abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, and all of the movements of the hip. So feel free to go through those other classes because there are classes dedicated specifically to walking you through other positions that you can use to train each of those movements, and you can actually follow along with me there. But today, like I said, we're just gonna do one for each. We're gonna start with internal rotation. And the reason that we're doing internal and external rotation first, and I'm gonna educate you guys a little bit because this is important and many people don't know this, is that rotation is of course the fundamental movement of your hip, which some people don't know, but it is a ball and socket joint. So it's made to rotate. And we care about rotation a little bit more or we address that first and we wanna clear that rotation first before we start looking at too many other things because your rotation speaks to how much space you have in your joint. And it also speaks to the quality and the health of the tissue that is immediately around those two bones. So if the tissue really, really deep in your joint is restricted, it's gonna restrict the movement of your femur on your pelvis and therefore will restrict your hips. So we're gonna look really deep first and we're gonna look at the amount of space that you have in that hip because you need space to be able to move those bones. If those bones are really tight and snug together, you can't move them as far and therefore your other movements will be limited. So we're gonna start there first. We also care about that because your cartilage in your joint is very, very important and maintaining the health of the deep articular structures in your joint overall is important. Many people are getting hip replacements out there and that's because the cartilage in their hip is degraded over time or degenerated early. The reason that that happens is because they're not getting enough movement in their hip or they're not nourishing that cartilage well enough over time. That's not the case for everybody always, but that's one of the main things that pushes the progression of that osteoarthritis or those degenerative changes and accelerates them. So because that cartilage doesn't really get blood supply and it's not necessarily maintained by your blood, it's maintained by your synovial fluid, which houses all of these nutrients that keeps that cartilage healthy, but we only get the nutrients from that fluid into the cartilage to actually keep the cartilage healthy when we move the joint. And if your ability to move the joint is limited because the tissue right around the joint is really tight or you don't have the space in the joint to actually accommodate that movement and you can't fully rotate or create that space, then your ability to get those nutrients into the cartilage is also limited. And therefore, now your limited mobility or your, or your limited rotational capacity is now limiting your ability to actually preserve your cartilage over time and therefore it hits the fast forward button on those degenerative changes. So that's another reason that we really care about rotation. Now, rather than sitting here any longer and lecturing you about why rotation is important, let's actually get to it and look at how do we actually find out, do I have the rotation that I need and what do I do about it if I don't? Now we're gonna start with internal rotation because that's the fundamental movement. So both internal and external rotation are both important, but internal rotation is even more important because of the directionality of that tissue that winds up immediately around your hip and holds those bones together. If that tissue is really restricted, we're gonna see it with your internal rotation more so. So we're gonna start with the right hip here. What I'm gonna have you do, we're gonna do a really easy assessment. We're gonna put you laying on your side. So I'm gonna go on to my left side with my hips and knees bent to about 90 degrees here and my yoga block between my legs. I'm gonna keep it pretty narrow for this one. So you don't need to go way up here and certainly not way up here. We're gonna check this range of motion when we do our cars later. Right now I'm more interested in what kind of hip internal rotation do you have when your knees are bent to 90 degrees as if you were sitting in a chair, but laying on your side. 
You can also test this sitting in a chair and arguably it's better to do sitting in a chair because you can sit on your pelvis and help to limit your pelvis motion. I'm gonna talk you through how in the sideline position you can monitor your pelvis so that you can make sure that it's actually coming from your hip because your, your pelvis and your low back may want to cheat for you and may want to make it look like you have more rotation than you do. So what we'll do is we'll take our top hand, I want you to put it in the space that exists right between your bottom ribs and the top of your pelvis. So you'll find those two bones kind of come together and you can wedge your hand in between those two bones. I want you to do so and then I want you to push down and you should feel like you're running into the top of your pelvis. Now with your front two fingers, you can also take those two fingers and place it on that really sharp bone in the front of your hip and pelvis. That's another easy landmark. So if you've got your hands in the, like in that top spot, that soft spot between your ribs and your pelvis, you're pushing down. Now you can feel the top of your pelvis and with those front fingers, you can feel that sharp bone in the front. Now you've got two landmarks on your pelvis. Neither of those bones should move or neither of those spaces or things that you're feeling should move. Technically, they're the same bone, but different parts of that bone. So making sure that that bone stays still, what you're gonna try and do is spin your thigh inwards such that your foot comes up in the air without hiking up through your pelvis. Because if you're limited, you're gonna find that your pelvis wants to come up towards your rib cage and that space between your ribs and your pelvis wants to reduce, i.e. your lumbar spine wants to side flex, which will make it look like you have internal rotation when you don't. And so we wanna find out here, how much do we have approximately? So if we call the foot being at around the same height as the knee, zero degrees, and we call the foot being directly above the knee, 90 degrees, what we're looking for is around half of that. So we wanna see, do you have around like 40, 45-ish, ish degrees, okay? Some people are very hard set on this and they're like, you need 40 degrees of internal rotation and 60 degrees of external rotation and that's the way it should be for everybody. I'm not wholeheartedly convinced about that. I think that if you're, again, in that general range, if you have around 40 degrees, that's probably pretty good. A lot of people don't have that. So you wanna see that you can kind of get your foot halfway the distance from zero up to 90, and then see where you get to without those bones moving at all. So keep it really honest and just feel it out for me and go, okay, how high can I internally rotate that leg? And where am I relative to that 40-ish degrees? Do I get to that halfway point? If you're having a hard time telling, if you're, if you're really limited and you can't even see, you can set your camera up in front of you like mine is right now and you can take a video of yourself doing this and then you can take a screenshot of how high you get and you can use that to monitor yourself over time. You wanna see that you can get that femur to spin inwards more and get that foot to come up higher. And so that is hip internal rotation. Like I said, just make sure that you're keeping that pelvis anchored. And if you're doing this seated, let's say I was sitting in a chair right now, you should be able to feel your sit bones on a chair, on the chair that you're sitting on. You'd wanna make sure that you keep equal weight through both of your sit bones when you do that rotational motion. Because for a lot of people, they'll wanna shift and put more weight onto the other side to get that pelvis to hike up so that they can use their low back and make it look like they have hip rotation. So just make sure you keep equal weight. Now, now you have a general idea of just pure rotation at 90 degrees in a relatively neutral position, what you have for rotation. We're gonna check all of our other movements simultaneously, but we're also gonna look at hip internal rotation in a more abducted position. So what I want you to do is take your bottom leg. You can either straighten it out totally, which is harder, or you can have it slightly bent, which is a little bit easier. It'll give you a little bit more stability. Take this block. I want you to place it right behind your low back behind you so that if you start to twist your spine, you knock that block over. That's gonna be one of your tells of like, okay, I'm starting to cheat through my back or my spine rather than using my hip. So we're gonna get a quick look at our external rotation, which again, if you're in OHF, we're gonna come look at this more specifically in a different position after, but we'll just get a quick glance at it here. You're gonna put your foot on the ground. You're gonna see how high you can get your knee. So I don't want your, your knee sliding along the ground like this. 
You're going to keep that knee nice and high, and then you're going to see how high can I pull my hip up into hip flexion, keeping that knee up, so not letting it come down to the ground or meet the floor here. You're trying to maintain as much space as you can between your knee and the floor. Hopefully you can bring that knee past 90 degrees and you can bring your hip up into a little bit more hip flexion. Once you can't come up anymore, you're now gonna check abduction and you're gonna see, okay, how high can I get my knee to come up, keeping my belly button pointed straight ahead without knocking that block over. If you feel yourself starting to run into that block, that means you're cheating. This gives you a picture of how much abduction you have, again, how much space you can create between your floor and the knee. Now we're gonna check your internal rotation here. So imagine a rod going through your knee into your hip, spin your thigh inwards so that your foot swings out behind you. You're gonna see what you have for internal rotation there. Then you're gonna reach your leg back behind you, but don't let your spine arch in that process. You're trying to keep that bone still and you can use your landmarks from earlier if you need to, to monitor that. Then your knee's gonna come down underneath. We're gonna come back through. We're gonna check pure hip extension. Can you get your knee behind your hip, right? So kind of in line with or even back behind without cheating and arching through your low back. Then you're gonna bring your knee up towards your shoulder. So pure abduction here without hiking that pelvis up. So again, feel free to use your landmarks. Then you're gonna rotate back through external rotation, land that foot as high as you can, keeping that knee up and then slide your foot away. So that was one really slow assessment focused hip car where you're just getting a feel for, okay, how do I internally rotate in abduction? What's it like up here? And what do I have for or mobility or movement in all of those other ranges of motion as well? Knowing that if your internal rotation is really limited, that that could limit all of those other motions. And so we, again, wanna focus on internal rotation, which is where we're gonna to come to next. So we assessed it actively in sideline. Now we're gonna assess it passively. So this will speak a little bit more to your flexibility. Meaning you just showed me or you demonstrated in that sideline position how far your muscles could pull you into internal rotation or how far they could spin your femur inwards. Now I want you to show me, without having to use your muscles, allowing yourself to just use gravity, how far can you get into internal rotation then? If you've got a big gap between how far you can get yourself with gravity, and when you're, again, just kind of falling into position, you don't have to use your own muscles to get yourself there, versus how far you can actively pull yourself into internal rotation, that tells you that you have a big passive to active gap, and therefore your mobility or your active range of motion is limited by your inability to demonstrate strength or control in those ranges of motion. So then you're gonna get a little bit more out of like your positional isometrics, your eccentrics, your liftoffs, your passive range holds, the things that we're gonna do a little bit later. Whereas if both of them are limited and you're like, oh, my passive flexibility is really limited and my active flexibility or my active mobility or active range of motion is also really limited, then we can start with things like your pails and rails and your passive stretching and then hit all those other things that I just mentioned after. So I want you to join me in this kind of modified 90-90 position. We're gonna offload the front leg, meaning you can just tuck it right in, don't worry about it. A full 90-90 is really challenging for a lot of people. So we'll take some of the pressure and load off that front leg. Your back leg, you're gonna have your knee in line with your hip and your knee bent to about 90 degrees. So ideally not way in here, though if you've got anything going on with your knee and you need to play with the angle of knee bend, you absolutely can. But if you can comfortably, have your knee bent to 90 degrees for me. Now if this position as a whole is really uncomfortable for you, you also have the option of walking your hands back. If your hips are really, really tired, you've got pelvis or low back issues going on, being up here might be too big of an ask. So you can bring yourself back or as an in-between, you can take your blocks, you can place them behind you and you can lean back onto those a little bit as well. So what we're gonna assess passively now is how far you can get your back butt cheek to the ground and how much you can turn your pubic bone over towards that back side. So if you've got really good passive flexibility or passive range of motion for internal rotation, you're gonna find that not only can you sit pretty upright here and you're pretty comfortable, pretty chill, but you can take that back 
your back butt cheek and back sit bone and you can sit it right down onto the ground and you can turn your pelvis towards that side and you can come over and you can comfortably touch that foot no problem or look that way no problem. If you're really struggling with that and you can't get that bum down and you can't get yourself turned that way, that tells us, okay, we might have some passive range of motion limitations here as well, which we'll then start to deal with. Now, like I said before, if this position is uncomfortable for you, yes, you can walk your hands back and do those exact same things here or back here. This might feel way better for you, especially if you've got any pinching in the front. You want to open that up so that you don't run into any pinching there. And then you can do your round here for our passive stretch and our pails and rails. But I just want you to find where that stretch starts. So don't force it as low as you can get it. Just go, okay, how far do I need to go before I feel that stretch? Oh, there's that stretch. If I turn that way, yep, there it is. You can hang out, give your body some time to adapt there rather than forcing it as deep as you can. And you can do your round of pails and rails that I'll talk you through soon here. Because you do have, if you've found what we just discussed, a passive restriction or a limitation in your flexibility, it's great if you can spend about two minutes stretching. We won't do that for every position on both hips in today's class, just to keep this video a little bit shorter, but I would love that if you found that, that you could hit pause, or I would love if you would hit pause, spend your full two minutes there for each position for each hip, if that's what you find, because that's probably what your body needs based on your assessment findings. Now, again, for those of you in Operation Human First, for those of you in my online platform, please bear in mind that this is just one way to work on hip internal rotation. So the class that comes after this and the many, many rotation-based classes that come after those ones, including the one class that's purely dedicated to if 90-90 doesn't work well for you, here is what your other options are, some of your other options. In all of those classes, you're gonna find so many different setups and ways that you can work on this movement but this setup might not be the most comfortable for you right now. You might explore some of those other classes and find, oh yeah, that one feels way better for me. I got way better results out of that one. I felt way more comfortable there. It was way less uncomfortable. And then that might be where you wanna funnel your time. So just know that this is just one option. Now when we do our pails, what that will look like is you are gonna imagine that you have a weight scale underneath this back foot and you are going to be driving force down into that weight scale as if trying to externally rotate your hip and applying force this way into the ground, but you will not move at all. You're gonna stay put, your pelvis importantly is gonna stay in the same position the whole time, and you're just gonna slowly start driving more and more force into the ground with that back leg, making that number on that imaginary weight scale higher and higher and higher without lifting this front knee up. When we do our reverse and we do our rails, you're gonna do the opposite. You're gonna think about trying to further internally rotate your thigh to make your foot lighter. But please, please, please monitor that pelvis and make sure it's not hiking up on you and you're not driving yourself forward or extending. I want you to stay like a human statue exactly as you are right now. You should not move when you do your pails or your rails because they are intended to be isometric. So we're gonna start our pails. You're gonna take a nice breath in. You're gonna bleed tension down that leg. So you're gonna tense everything up through that hip, through that leg. You're gonna imagine that waist scale underneath your back foot. I want you to give me like 20% effort to start, I'm trying to rotate into the ground and then slowly scaling that up, find like 40%. Scale it up a little higher, give me like 60%. Keep climbing, give me 80%. And if you can, feel out. What's it feel like to push as hard as I can without pain? And you're gonna hold that for about 10 seconds here and then we're gonna reverse. But remember, I don't want you to move at all, including when we do that reversal. So I'm gonna root myself into the ground here. We're gonna hold this for another five, four, three, two, one. Now you're gonna reverse. You're gonna to try to internally rotate to make that foot lighter on the ground, but because you're in your passive range of motion, you will not be able to lift off, nor should you be able to lift off. If you can, you are not deep enough into a stretch. We're gonna keep holding this for another five to six seconds. You might be cramping right now. If this is new for you, if your brain is not used to using your hip in this position, breathe through it if you can. Know that it won't harm you. It's just uncomfortable two, one, now you're gonna slowly relax 
Let that out, let that chill. Don't come shooting out of this position though. Stay in it with me if you can. Now we're gonna move on to some passive range holds. So for those of you that didn't have the big flexibility gap, meaning like you had tons of flexibility, you just didn't have the active strength or control to get your foot up earlier, so we discovered that we have that gap. What you can then do is use tools like this next one to fill that gap. Now this is just one tool and there are many, and I'm not saying that this is the best, but it is one. So we're gonna use our passive range holds to now start to actually train our active control in that position. So what that's gonna look like is you're gonna take yourself and you are now, unlike I said earlier, gonna put yourself as deep into that stretch as you can. So get your right butt cheek as low to the ground as you can, turn your pelvis as much towards that side as you can, and you are going to attempt to do your rails meaning you're gonna to attempt to lift that foot up, but you will not be able to. And then you're just gonna slowly, if you imagine a laser coming out of my pelvis, right now my laser is kind of pointing just off to the left of the camera. You're gonna slowly turn that pelvis over just as much as you need to to get that foot off the ground. We're gonna hold, and then you're gonna sit back down all the way into it. You're gonna to attempt to lift, attempt to lift, attempt to lift, find the point where you can actually lift, hold, sit back down and reset. For some of you, you might find that it's like you gotta keep going, 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 and it's not until you get to like here that you can lift off. That's okay, that's your gap for what it is right now. You should find that gap starting to close over time or that should at least be the goal. And like I said, this is just one tool that you can use to close that gap. So join me now, let's hit four of these. We're gonna take our pelvis, we're gonna sit it as far down as we can. We're gonna turn our pelvis as far to that direction or the right side as we can. We are going to root ourselves into the ground. We're gonna to attempt to lift that foot up and then imagine that laser coming out of your pelvis. We're gonna turn it to the left as much as we need to to get that foot off the ground. We're gonna hold there and then we're gonna come back down, reset, relax cinch everything back up, think about trying to internally rotate, make that foot as light as you can on that imaginary scale that we talked about earlier, and then rotate, 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 rotate till that foot leaves the ground, hold, reset, come back into it. Solidify yourself there, make that foot light, hip is working, you're trying to lift, trying to lift, trying to lift, trying to lift, finding the point where you can lift, holding, Coming back down, relaxing. We're gonna do this one more time. Take up as much passive range as you can. Turn yourself to that side as much as you can. Try to lift that foot as much as you can. And then we're gonna rotate away. We're gonna hold, 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 hold. And then we're gonna come back down, reset and relax. Now, that was internal rotation on the right side. We did a passive stretch to help with flexibility. We hit our pails and rails to see if we could gain a little bit more range of motion. And then we use our passive range holds to try and actually address the gap between that passive and active range and start to actually build some active control and strength in that range of motion. Now we're gonna to come to the left side. We are gonna assess, all right, what do we got on the left side? Is it the same? Is it better than what we had on the right side? Let's find out. So join me again in this 90-90 position on our side meaning you've got your hips bent to 90 degrees, you've got your knees bent to 90 degrees. Take your hand, wedge it between that soft spot between your ribs and your pelvis, press down to find the top of your pelvis, take your fingers, put them on that pokey bone right in the front of your hip, it'll feel kind of sharp. Now you've got your two landmarks there, don't let either of those landmarks change as you see how far you can internally rotate that hip without those bones moving. So the only thing that moves is that your thigh acts like a rotisserie chicken and it just axially rotates to bring that foot up with no change in your pelvis position. Once again, we'll call foot being around the same height as the knee neutral or zero degrees. So when we come up, we wanna see, can we get around halfway between our 90 degree point and our zero degree point? That's what we're looking for here. We wanna see, do we have that capacity for internal rotation? And I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do this seated in a chair after. And like I said, use these same two landmarks for both internal and external rotation and just check seated. If I really anchor my pelvis and I sit on it, do I have that range of motion? How much do I have internal versus external? What do I have left versus right? 
You can take a video, set your camera up in front of you, check internal and external seated. It'll take you like 30 seconds. Take four screenshots. Now you have a visual and objective marker for your internal rotation and your external rotation on each hip. And it gives you a visual for it, which you can't really see from this position here, right? So just bear that in mind. So that's okay. That's where we're at for internal rotation. So now you should know, okay, am I really limited? Am I way down here? Am I coming up quite high? Do I got lots of range? What are you dealing with there for you? And now we're going to check in some abduction and we're just going to see what we have for those other motions. So bottom leg can be slightly bent or straight if you want to make it a little bit harder. We're going to check hip external rotation and flexion. So pulling up through that foot, trying to keep that knee nice and high, we're going to see, okay, can we break 90 degrees of hip flexion? Awesome if you can. If not, your hip flexion might be limited too. Keeping that knee up, we are going to abduct. Do not let your belly button go for the ride. And if you start to notice that happening, take that block. Or if you just want to act proactively, put it right behind your low back. Make sure you don't knock it over. So knee comes up. You're trying to create a lot of space between your knee and the ground without rotating through your spine. Then you're going to check, OK, now here, can I internally rotate my hip in abduction? If you're cramping, that means, uh oh, my brain doesn't know how to use that tissue here. It'll learn, again, through the classes. Now you're gonna reach back into extension and now you're trying to get your knee in line with your hip or behind your hip without extending your spine. So trying to keep that pelvis bone, again, pretty still. Then your leg's gonna come back down underneath. We're gonna recycle it and we're gonna go straight back into extension. So now you're checking extension down low and then you're gonna reach up through abduction. So you're trying to bring your knee up towards your left shoulder. You're gonna rotate back the other way and you're gonna see, okay, how high can I land that foot on the ground, keeping that knee nice and high, and then slide that foot away from you. Very good. So now you've kind of checked in with some of the other motions, but like I said, if your internal rotation is really limited, don't worry too, too much if you find out like, oh no, my abduction or my extension or my flexion is also really limited because we'll have to start with the rotation in many instances, not all, but many anyways. So we're gonna, once again, we're gonna offload this front, front leg here. So just bend your hip and knee, get it comfortable. If you need, you can take your blocks and you can prop them up behind you or you can go even lower and just walk your hands out and sit quite far back. We're gonna have that knee out from our hip and knee bent to around 90 degrees if we, if we can comfortably, but if you have knee stuff going on and you need to offload, feel free to do so. Now we're gonna check, can we get our left butt cheek to the ground and can we turn our pelvis towards our left side? Can we easily touch that left foot? What do we have for flexibility here? Is there a bunch of space between your glute and the ground? Or can you get that sit bone right to the floor and you can go, yeah, I can basically sit on my left glute in this position or left sit bone, no problem. That'll now give you a view of, okay, what's your flexibility or your passive range of motion like? We'll hang out here, we'll do our, our stretch, and then we'll backfill that with our, our pails and our rails and our passive range holds after as well. The other way that you can actually kind of get a visual for what is my passive range of motion and what is my active range of motion is the passive range holds that we did on the other one, right? Which we're gonna do on this side too. If you can sit yourself quite far down, but like I explained before, you have to like keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and only now can you get your foot off. That tells us you've got a big gap between passive and active. And so then you wanna be doing things like your passive range holds, your lift offs, your eccentrics, your all of those things to help to backfill that as well. And it won't just be passive stretching that you need in that instance. So pails here, like I said, just like before, imagine that weight scale underneath your left foot now. You are trying to drive force through that left foot as if trying to do that motion, but you will not move at all. We're gonna slowly scale that up. You're gonna hold that at max effort or your max pain-free effort. And then we're going to reverse. You're going to try to lift that foot off, but you should not be able to because you've sat yourself into your passive range, into your stretch, and you're now beyond your active range. So I don't want you to be able to lift your foot off here. Once we've done that, we'll hit our four passive range holds and we'll move on to hip external rotation. 
Now I'm going to move along here. As I said before, please feel free to hit pause if this is really limited and you are so far from getting that glued onto the ground or it feels so tight for you or you have to walk your hands way back. Spend your two minutes here, all right? Passive, or sorry, pails. So we're going to start pressing down through that foot. We're going to solidify ourselves. 20% effort trying to internally rotate, I guess that'd be externally rotate, into the floor. You're trying to spin your foot inwards, thighs going outwards. Scale your way up to 40%. Try a little bit more, give me 60%. So you're slowly scaling it up. Find 80%. And your greatest, safest, pain-free effort, whatever you can give me. So if you imagine that weigh scale underneath your left foot, I want the highest number you can give me on that scale without your knee lifting on you. We're going to sustain that for another six, five, four, three, two, one. Now you're going to reverse. You're going to think about trying to internally rotate your hip to lift that foot off of the ground. Now trying to give me the smallest number that you can on that weigh scale. So that weigh scale before you were giving me the highest number you can. Now I want the smallest number and we're holding that for another six, five, four, three, two, one, and then ramp it back down. You're just gonna relax. Try not to leave this position. If you can help it, stay here with me. If you need to hit pause, you need to come out, you gotta shake that hip out. You can try to breathe your way through it though and get your nervous system comfortable here. We're gonna hit our four passive range holds now. So you're gonna to attempt to do a rails, but this time, unlike just finding a stretch like we did before and not going to end range, this time I want you to sit that glute as low as you can, turn your pelvis as much as you can to that side, attempt to lift that foot up, and then we're gonna see how long it takes you rotating away before that foot can actually come up and you can actually create that little bit of space between that foot and the ground. So join me here, find your passive end range, make that foot as light as you possibly can. Imagine that laser coming out of that pubic bone. We're gonna turn it away, 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 away till that foot comes off. We're gonna hold, 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 hold. And then we're gonna come back down, relax, reset. Solidify yourself here. Make that number on that imaginary waist scale as light as you can. And then you're gonna turn that pelvis away till the foot comes up. Hold, 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 hold. Sit yourself back down into it. Relax, reset. Same thing. Make that foot as light as you possibly can on that scale. Turn that pelvis away. Try to hold, reset, come back into it. Relax. This is your last one. Try and make it your best one. Try to lift that foot up. Pelvis stays turned that way. Foot gets lighter, 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 lighter. It comes off, hold, 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 hold. Relax, reset. And now just ramp your breathing back down. Don't come shooting out of this position. Let your nervous system chill a little bit here. And then once you've found that state of calm, you can come out of it. We'll shake that hip out. 